Today I am installing some new or uh, replacing some new irrigation pipes underground and I figure I'd take this opportunity to explain to many of you who ask questions about how deep these things go in the ground. Over on my website I've literally answered this question tens of thousands of times. The reason for the question has to do a lot of the times with how far down do you need to dig to put new pipes in or how far down do you have to dig to fix a broken pipe or a cracked pipe or to change a sprinkler head. And my answer to you over on the website and here right now in this video is the average sprinkler pipe is about eight to 12 inches underground. This is my big dog, his name's Wilson. He's gigantic. Hey, sit down. Down. Now, if I just left you with eight to 12 inches underground, I'm leaving a lot of context out. If you live in an area where you have freezes and thaws, like the freeze-thaw cycle of true winter, then you do want your sprinkler pipes to be a little bit lower in the ground, closer to that 12-inch mark. If you run half-inch pipes, especially in areas that freeze a lot, you're also going to want to keep that down close to the 12, maybe 14 inch range. If you live in a southern state where it never really freezes and you're using a uh, three quarter inch pipe, then it probably doesn't have to be anywhere close to 12 inches. But I would say that it depends on the sprinkler head that you're using. Now, I got two big dogs here, so it's a little bit awkward, but what I'm using is a flex pipe which attaches to my PVC pipe underground and a four inch sprinkler nozzle. Now a four inch sprinkler nozzle, you can tell that you got a four inch because when you pick it up, it's very long, as opposed to a shorter two or three inch nozzle. When you pick it up, it's nowhere near as tall. Now a four inch nozzle is always gonna be your, or a four inch uh, sprinkler head is always gonna be your best option for a below ground sprinkler unit because when the sprinkler turns on, this actually extends all the way up so that it sprays water over the top of your grass. If you don't know what's in your ground, just pull up the thing and measure how, how tall it is. Is it four inches, two, or three? So with that being underground, you know that this is about four inches. And if you're using a flex pipe, you can't just have it just you can't just kink it right there. You need to have some space underneath. So that right there is bordering on. So as I turn it, that is bordering on nine inches, ten and a half right there. Nine and a half, almost ten inches right there. Here in my trench right here, I've actually got the pipe about eleven inches down. And that's because I'm using the tall sprinkler with a flex pipe that I have to have a bow on the bottom or a rounded, uh, I don't know, whatever you call that, a rounded uh, radius there at the bottom. If the trench is closer to eight inches, then that's going to force the sprinkler head to sit way up above the ground. And that's not gonna be good because you're going to damage, sprinkler, sprinkler heads are gonna get damaged significantly faster much more often if they're sitting above the ground. You want it to be right at the surface. That way, if you step on it, you don't even notice it. It's not going to get damaged if it's sitting right at the soil. And that's gonna force your trench to be deeper regardless of where you live and regardless of your freeze-thaw cycles. Now, if you do actually wanna have a, uh, a very not deep trench, then you're gonna be using a two inch pop-up sprinkler, and you're gonna be using something like this. So instead of a flex pipe, you're gonna be using, it's gonna be coming right off of your uh, PVC. You're gonna use a tiny, the shortest little adapter possible, then that's gonna thread on right there. See if I can get it to thread so that I can measure. And that right there is going to be seven and a half inches. So basically, no matter what, your trench has to be at least seven and a half inches deep. If you're gonna go out there and dig something yourself, don't think that you can get away with a shallow six inch trench, no matter what you do. Man, this guy, dude. So anyway, <laughs> I gotta get off the ground. I'm gonna show you a couple other configurations of other sprinkler uh, accessories and other reasons why this trench might actually need to be deeper because this pipe system right here, is a traditional system that I'm digging 11 inches deep but I have another setup in another area of my yard where it's almost a foot and a half deep. Let me get off the ground here and head over to the table. All right, I'm over here at my hot tub. Now, I'm not a professional irrigation installer, so I haven't dug up as many of these as many workers have, but in all of my time dealing with sprinklers in my yard and other people's yards, I've never actually dug up a sprinkler that is taller than four inches. This is a four inch sprinkler head. 
this is another four inch sprinkler head, although it is slightly uh, less tall. By the way, I should note that four inch sprinklers don't refer to the height of the body. It refers to the height of the actual pop-up sprinkler nozzle. You can see this four inch body is actually about six and a half inches tall top to bottom, but the nozzle on the inside is four inches. So the point here is if you're going to be accidentally digging up or installing a short sprinkler, your, your trench could be on the shallow side. But the shallowest it will ever be is about like that, seven and a quarter, seven and a half or so. If the riser is a little bit bigger like this one, it could, plus you've got a four inch, it could come down to something like this. That's almost 11 inches. And if you're using a flex, you, since you can't kink it, you got to give some extra space. So that'll be a little bit shallower than something like this, but not a big difference. Now, this sprinkler head uh, is very different from the others. This is a, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll call it a more modern sprinkler head. Uh, it's a fancy one for sure. The valve for the sprinkler is in the head itself, as opposed to in a valve box somewhere off to the side of your house. It's also got a little like small computer in here so that you can do a lot of fancy things with this sprinkler compared to this. Now I've installed this in my front yard and it's going into my backyard a little bit later in the fall. And the reason for that is because it saves water. I don't use nearly as much water when I use this compared to these. But the drawback is the trench has to be a lot deeper, as you can see. So this top to bottom is about 13 and a half inches, which means if I'm hand trenching this into the ground, I've got to have the trench around 14 inches at minimum for the pipe to connect to the hose and for this to come up and this not be sitting above the ground. Now, whatever the reason is that you need to dig down underground, I'm going to guess that you are probably replacing a sprinkler head or maybe uh, extending or fixing an existing sprinkler system under your lawn. When I moved into this house, I had underground sprinklers in this, uh, in both of my yards, the front and the back, but there was a lot of problems with them. There was some leaks and there were some pipes that weren't in the best locations. I had to move them. Traditional sprinklers, although they can be shallow in the ground, they can also be deep in the ground. But no matter what, you have to go all the way around your entire lawn zone, which means that trench is going to cover a lot of linear feet. One of the primary reasons why I wanted to use one of these things, even though the trench has to be so much deeper, is that I don't have to go around the entire zone. I literally just trench to the middle of the yard and that's it. It's a deeper trench, but it covers far less linear feet. It was much simpler to trench into the lawn and install myself. Hopefully I've given you a good ballpark estimate at how deep your sprinklers are in your lawn if you need to repair something. But if you're preparing to install a new system, I'd encourage you to take a look at the new uh, modern sprinkler systems like the one that I'm installing below. This one is from a com company called Eargreen. I've got a blog post over on my website where I discuss uh, the costs of going with Eargreen versus traditional sprinklers. If you're curious about that, the link is in the description below. But obviously, you run sprinklers in your yard, and even if you're not switching out your sprinkler heads to something newer and fancier and computerized, I do hope that you try your best to use a little bit less water in your lawn over the coming season. I have a video right up here all about how to use less water in the lawn but still keep that grass green. Make sure to watch that video next.